We are in uh, Khelmeu, which is a border crossing uh, along the, uh, the enormous Romanian-Ukrainian border, frankly. It's 50 miles longer than the Polish border where we were earlier in the week. There are three major crossings, and this is one of them, although at the moment uh, there, no one has come through yet, and the volunteers are telling us that's, uh, that's, it has not, that, that is the first time since the start of the war that it has been that quiet. Just to give you the latest figures on uh, Romania... Uh, 20, this is the latest figures from the Romanian border agency. 21,000 people entered the country on Wednesday. That's down 11%. 8,000 through the border that is uh, behind me. In total, 344,000 people have entered the country. Uh, 80% of them, 80% of them have left. And uh, that leaves 84,000 people who are in Romania. The uh, president, uh, Klaus Johannes, uh, his government are looking at uh, providing more uh, semi-permanent and permanent accommodation. A humanitarian effort has uh, sprung up to help with the people as soon as they come across the border. But there is, of course, an issue when it comes to uh, uh, more, more, more permanent residents. So they're looking at uh, that sort of thing. In the last few minutes, this truck has just pulled up. We're just going to have a little look around the back to see what they're loading and unloading. Um, they're taking away some crates. So let's have a look at what's on those crates there. But uh, this tra this uh, vehicle, part of the, humani Hi. Part of the humanitarian effort, um, which we're going to show you now. If we have a look, this is uh, in this tent. This is where the volunteers come when they first... If you just have a little poke in there, Jim. Um, this is where the volunteers first come when they enter. There's the registration desk there. There's a wheelchair in the corner and this is where they sort of complete the first little bit of paperwork um in terms of not from the border authorities they do that over there but the paperwork in there is so that the charity can get their details and match them with their needs you've got a crate here full of bread hi hi um we're just gonna uh can you step over that jim do you think just if you could give jim a hand sorry we just had this crate put in the way it's gonna come out of the way thank you Second. cheers thank you so, yeah, so look, there's, nobody's, nobody has arrived here through this crossing this morning, but still aid is arriving. So you saw the bread there. They're here. They're busy unpacking it into boxes. Um, you've got some cakes over here. And down here, there's some soft toys for the kids. Hello. Hi. Hi. You okay? <laughs> Hello. So you've got the soft toys for the kids here. And I know that this box here, was, uh, it was empty last night. And it was as the children were coming in, they were picking up the toys out of here. And it was really heartwarming to see them like with smiles on their faces. Through here, there's some toiletries, some little kids' shoes here, bless them. And then some more sanitary products. There's a puzzle there. So they've got everything here. And then over here, there were uh, quite a few Ukrainian families last night that were seated here. There was some seating area here, and now some tables have sprung up with aid on them. So that's kind of what's happening here at the moment. It's heartbreaking, Paul. I mean, it's those, those little children that were just just with you there. I mean, because, of course, predominantly, this is a, this is a, a, a refugee crisis of women and children, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Predominantly women and children that are coming across the border because um, a lot of men are being sent back to Ukraine to fight if they're aged 18 to 60. There are medical exemptions, or if you're a single parent, you're allowed to carry on because obviously you've got to look after your, your children. But most of the time, it's women and children coming across the border. That said, yesterday we, in Hungary, we spoke to uh, a woman who'd brought across 52 children on a bus with two other adults. The parents of those children had dropped the kids off at an academy on, over across the border in Ukraine and then gone back to fight. They'd left their children there. These were kind of teenagers, sports students, and gone back to fight. And then these three adults were in charge of 52 children coming across the border into Hungary. They didn't speak the language. They didn't have any contacts in Hungary. And so they were kind of making it up as they went along. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is heartbreaking to hear these stories. Um, and actually, I was going to say, when I spoke, when I, all out of all the Ukrainians I've spoken to, we're talking about Joe Biden saying that uh, if um, uh, the US were to uh, put a no-fly zone in across Ukraine uh, to come into conflict with Russia, then it would spark World War III. A lot of the Ukrainians you speak to say, 
World War Three has started, right? It's not going to start. It has started. And the phrase they always use is that you need to close the sky. That's the phrase they use, close the sky. Many Ukrainians you speak to would like the US to get involved. So it's interesting to hear Joe Biden talking about you know, potentially kick-starting World War III when a lot of Ukrainians we speak to say that it has started already.